time, and we had all the powers that be in this suite, and we did. How much did the deaths of Biggie and Tupac affect you? It, it made me be more involved when I saw beefs in my industry. It made me be more involved if I saw, you know, it made me be more involved in, in the kids' lives that I'm at every day. It, it showed me that, you know, yeah, you take your platform and take the knowledge that you have to be able to save some lives because, you know, I mean, it was, it, it, you don't know how many conversations I had with both of them guys. You know, uh, I remember, you know, which was the wild part about it, here, me and Snoop a couple of years before had beef, but then when we heard that Biggie uh, died, me and Snoop was actually in the studio together. Wow. And so we sitting there and every, the phones go to ringing and everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, now here, me and the guy who had beef, you know, sitting in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, making a record, and then, you know, because of this same situation, these guys, uh, Biggie, then get get murdered. Uh, and we and him both went to the hospital that night. So, I mean, it just, you know, and, and we share a lot in common, me and Snoop, when we're dealing with the kids Snoop's and all Snoop, that. Snoop's my brother. I mean, Snoop yeah, and I are real I, tight. He's one of the best people I know, bro. I, I got a lot of love for him, and I think it's amazing what he has done with his life and how he has yes. transcended yes. the and beyond the hip hop industry. He's never left. Yep. You yep. know him, I think about him again like LL acting and doing the things yeah. in the movies and television show. I just Jay-Z producing Mm -hmm. Producing shows, yep. producing movies. We can't ignore all of that. I marvel at that. But I asked you that question because I want to transition to something else as well. The news about Diddy. Oh. We said, I mean, the, the, you know, Homeland yeah. Security is raiding his homes in L.A. In and Miami. Daylight? They're raiding P. Diddy's property. I never thought I'd see that. In broad daylight. In broad daylight. Yeah, because you know, normally when the federal rallies come, they come at four o'clock in the morning when you sleep. So, because they came in broad daylight, what do you make of it? I think it was a big grandstand situation. Because it was, it was daylight. A, it was daylight. It was sending a message. It was sending a message that this is what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. I mean, it obviously covered every news station. Everybody got to see, you know, them grabbing the kids out, which which I probably, I had a little problem with. Yeah. Uh, and I, the, you I'm, ain't after the kids, you after him. That's not yeah, that. yeah, right. yeah. You, you know, and that, I mean, grabbing the kids, dragging them out, putting them in handcuffs, I mean, that could be traumatizing for these type of kids. These type of kids ain't lived on the right. street life. They don't know nothing about that. They lived the, the, the good life, which, you know, because their parents uh, provided that for them. But, uh, but, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of guys, like the Diddy's and the Kanye West's of the world, you know, when you go cut them deals, when you go in the back room and you cut them deals with the major corporations, you right. need to know, you need to know where you stand at. You need to know that, you know, that these people, these people really own you, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, you need to know how to play the game. And I don't think uh, he played the game in the right way because at the end, if you're going to sue, if you're gonna sue the Diageo, you better have your stuff together. Yeah, because they I got mean, they, 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 politicians love them. That politicians love they are they are gonna be the the number one uh, liquor brand in, in in the world. You know what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, you know when you look at politics and how politics work, you know these type of corporations do what? They put money into politicians' mm -hmm. uh, campaign fund. And, and that, but that's why I think he's in a world of trouble. And I don't know anything. I don't mm -hmm. want anybody to think I know anything. Diddy is always cool with me. Yeah, always treats me, too. me with respect. Good guy. I hope that he's innocent of what he's being, uh, of what they're investigating for. You know, some some you know, some sex ring, some some sex trafficking yeah. ring, and all of this stuff. I hope he's innocent of all. That. I don't yes. know what the hell is going on, but I do feel this way. In the world of big business, and this needs to be said while I'm sitting right next to you, Lou Campbell. In the world of big business, when you make an enemy a big business, along the way, they know enough about you. Yes, they do. To come for you when they want to come for you. Yes, yes, they do. You understand? And, 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 and it don't have to involve jail. It doesn't have to involve a crime. It can involve them squeezing you out of your money. Yes, making yeah. sure they humble you beyond repair. Yes, and and and, and that's the that's what you see right now with Diddy, and you see that with Kanye West. Mm. You know, when you look at these two brothers, you know they cut the deals, you know, with Adidas, and Adidas spend millions and billions of dollars and in putting into these dudes' pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 the liquor companies putting all these millions and billions into their pockets. These guys, you know. 
when you turn on them, you better know what you're doing. You know, and I always advise guys, don't you can't fight them because it becomes like CeeLo. Yeah. You know, big bank take little bank. You know, and, and, and big bank is gonna win every time. You know, and at the end of the day, you when you go into that war mm -hmm. with these individuals, you need to know that, you know, they they their their ideal of you, they own you. And if you turn on them, they're gonna break you, they're gonna humble right. you. You know, they're going to take everything that, that they gave you right. away from you, humble you, find another brother, mm -hmm. and put him on that pedestal, the same pedestal that they put you on. But as independent as you have been throughout your career, I think it's important to bring this up because I try to bring this up. You know, I'm 56 years old. I've been in my business for a long time. And I try to tell folks all the time, stop acting like you completely own and operate everything yourself. Everybody needs somebody and everybody answers somebody. Mm -hmm. Your bosses answer the bosses. Those bosses answer to somebody else. Those bosses answer the shareholders, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and board and you members. you moving people, stop. And, and board members, that's right. And board members and shareholders. And oh, by the way, in the end, you're going to have to deal with the public at large. You can't achieve success by yourself. You always right. need somebody. And to me, I think it's a mistake when people try to act like, I can do this by myself. I don't need a damn so because you're gonna find out you're gonna have to ask for something from somebody at some point. Am I wrong in thinking that way? Oh no, no question about it. You you're gonna have to you gonna have to lean on other people. When you when you get into that part of uh, a, a, a big business and you're dealing with big business, you're the spokesperson for big business. Big business is is, is a it's a stock exchange traded stock mm -hmm. and you're moving that stock because you you make these claims and accusations about them. Oh, trust me, before you get into that courtroom, they're going to tarnish your entire reputation. So that jury that you think is the jury of your peers, they're going to already have this, this understanding as to who you are. And you, you're going to lose before you get in there. And that is how big business works. So you brought up Pete Diddy. You, I, I brought up Pete Diddy. You brought up Kanye West as well. This is the music industry. It always, I mean, it, it, it's like a metaphor for resurrection, mm -hmm. for crying out loud. There's, there's always a second chance. There's always additional opportunities. With Kanye West, I believe that to be the case. With P. Diddy, I'm not so sure. It depends. Well, Kanye, on, 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 Kanye he can't get a, 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 a sample cleared. Wow. He so you saying, out so all you, these venues. So you think he's in more trouble than Diddy in terms of being able to resurrect his career? I think I think Diddy probably can weather the storm more so than Kanye. Okay. Uh, because Kanye, Kanye is at a place right now where he's barred out of arenas. Uh, he can't get records cleared. Uh, he can't get features. Nobody don't want to do features. And in this day of, of entertainment, unlike when we grew up, you know, there weren't no features. You know, these dudes need to be on there with other people. You know, and so he's he's gonna have a a harder time. Did he may be able to come back from this? Uh, you know, did he? If he's innocent. If he's innocent. You know, it, 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 when you think about it, it's no charges pressed. Right. It's no charges. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just. It's like all, they're, they're trying to they're trying to embarrass him, yes. stain him, etc. If there are no charges, yes. and there's not going to be any charges. If they charge him with something, we can't think like that. Nah, nah, that's a different game. That's a whole other movie, right? Homeland yeah. Security. Yeah, Homeland Security. Ain't, ain't local, ain't LAPD. No, you know what I'm saying? The 